for me, yeah. if I can, uh, you know, acquire the whole, I'm just gonna go find it. Uh, for sure. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Jeff from Pack Geek. We're here at the Gas Monkey Garage, which is the home of Discovery's TV show, Fast and Loud. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. It's all about sports cars, but today we're here to talk about sports cards. We're gonna talk to one of the show members. His name is Jason Aker, and he's a huge collector. Follow me. All right, guys, we're here in the monkey trap, and I'm here with Jason Aker from Fast and Loud. Man, thank you for having us. This place is amazing. Dude, uh, I, I can't tell you how much I enjoy collecting cards. It's one of my geek things that people don't know about me. We build <laughs> these super cool cars, but that's really where my passion's at, so it's awesome to have you guys here. That is so cool. So wh what is it like with this being your office? Well, you know, actually next door is my office. We do a lot of our meetings in here, but I mean, you, you become numb, you forget how special it is to get to work at a place like this where you have these kind of cars sitting around right. all the time because you just, it's your job so you don't think about it. But when you stop and you think about it, years later we'll go, wow, that was a pretty cool deal that we all worked. I've got an amazing team of guys. We build some phenomenal cars and we have a lot of fun doing it. So, I mean, Fast and Loud is huge, but for the five to 10 people that watch Pack Geek that aren't familiar with the show, can you give us kind of a, a broad overview of what the show's about? Well, what we do is we got a, a boss that's really uh, fiery and he's a lot of flair and he's a lot of fun and he goes out and finds vehicles he wants to do and hot rods, old trucks, old cars, sports cars, and we just do our own thing to him. We put the gas monkey touch on, we give him a little pizzazz, a little flair, and then we sell them or we take them out and we do cool stuff with them. But, it is the most amazing. We'll work on something in the 30s one week, and then you got a 2006 Ford GT we're doing yeah. over here. So we're all over the place. So we got a wide range of stuff, and you never know what we're gonna get out of him. So what is your role in this cast of crazy car guys? So I got a, a crew of seven, uh, myself included. I'm the shop foreman, also uh, lead mechanic. So okay. everybody has a particular thing they specialize in, but all the guys on the crew can do pretty much everything to cover each other. So. I've been very fortunate that it's taken us a long time to put this crew together, but uh, all in all, like I said, we get to do the best thing in the world as a job every day, so it's, it's pretty awesome. So, okay, you guys have done so many seasons of the show. Yep. You've seen so many cars. Yep. Do you have a favorite that comes to mind? I know that's probably a tough question to answer. But... Man, I'll tell you, um, we built a 68 Bullet car this last season, and we were fortunate enough the McQueen family set up a deal that we got to reenact the chase scene in San Francisco for the first time in 50 years since oh his father did it. Oh my gosh. So that was huge, and then, uh, you know, I've got a few personal favorites, the uh, 2006 Ford GT that we put on bags here about two, three years ago, really cool car. And uh, we had a 49 Chevrolet truck that uh, was for a Haviland giveaway that was phenomenal. We nearly killed our entire crew building that truck. It was so much work. <laughs> six weeks, I think, honestly, we worked 80 hours a week, six straight weeks. So it was a phenomenal truck, but it took everything we had. But yeah, there's a few that really stand out, but all in all, 90% of the cars we do here are, are things that you think, wow, that was, it really turned out better than what we thought. So as you know, we, we are not here to talk about sports cars, believe it oh. or not. We are here to talk about sports cards. Yes. And you are, as I understand, a huge fan of Hall of Fame hockey player, Brett Hall. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. you are a super collector of his. How did this start? Well, it started in high school, 91, when he was really coming on the scene. You know, he led the league in scoring for three straight years in goal scoring. And that's when Gretzky was red hot. So you gotta right. think, that comparison yeah uh, and I really liked him and liked watching him play and Team USA played in one of the World Cups around that time too and so I decided that's who I was going to collect and in that era we didn't have eBay right. it was a lot yeah. harder in Oklahoma I live in Oklahoma City so yeah. to find hockey cards was just a real chore so so hard I started networking a few people that I just knew through people and then we had a connection here in Dallas of all places a gentleman that had moved from Canada down here and established a small card shop. So about once a month, I'd drive to Dallas and just trade for anything and everything he had, Brett Hull. About that same time, that was 98, 99, Hull got traded to the Dallas Stars. Right. So it made it a lot easier to acquire. But it was tough in those early years until eBay came around. And then even when eBay came around, I had some really good friends 
worldwide that I'd met through Brett Hull that were collectors of Brett Hull. So fighting those three or four guys for the top elite cards, it was tough. It is. I, I remember the days before eBay. eBay has kind of leveled the playing field yeah. for everybody, for uh, especially people that are really into a particular player. Because yeah. you can go on there and a lot of times you can find anything you want, but as I understand, like you're you're a one of one, you're a, a rare card sort of guy. Well, and fortunately for me, in the early years it wasn't like that at all. Um, I've got a really good job and my kids are older now, so I don't have to, I've got a little more money sometimes to spend on cards and I've become, I've gotten to the point where I just want to make this collection as good as it can be. Um, there's one problem with that is, as I've kind of briefly told you, is that there was a period of time that things got really tough financially in my family, and I had to sell a bunch of this collection exactly. from the 98 rain, 90, year 98 through 2005, so I've got huge holes in there now where I mm. used to have every parallel, really rare uh, emblems, jerseys, and all that, and they're all gone now. So it's getting hard to find that stuff. The yeah. older stuff is yeah. difficult to acquire, but. So right now, that's my new challenge, is filling those holes that I used to have and picking up whatever I can along the way. Well, um, so have you ever had a chance to meet Brett Hull? No, and that's something I would really, really like to do. Uh, especially, I thought, I don't know exactly where he resides now. I know he lived in Dallas for a while, now that I'm working in Dallas, but that would be a phenomenal honor. That, yeah, well, you gotta, we gotta get you together with Brett Hull. That would be at, at some point in time. so cool for me, and hopefully, He's a fan of the show out there, so he could come by here, take a look at some cool Red cars. Red Bull, if you're watching yes. right now, you need yeah. to meet Jason. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite things about the show is the flipping aspect. And then I think yeah. that also probably appeals to a lot of the, the collectors yeah. that watch Fast and Loud. So have you ever been a flipper, or is that just not something that, that you, you mean cars-wise? Yeah. Well, it's just something I never had the financial ability to do. Got it. Um, Got it. I was always on the mechanic side. I was always the guy running the shop getting the cars, what they need to be to get them gone. Uh, there's a lot of good money in that flipping yeah. side, but no, yeah. it's something I was on the, the technical side more so. So even here, you know, Richard gives me a lot of rain. He gives me a lot of, but I really just don't have time. I, I can't get out in the market. I'm here working on the cars. Have you ever been a card flipper? Oh yeah, there was, uh, there was a time where I was buying a lot of packs, opening a lot, and it's difficult, as anybody knows, to pull the player you want. Oh man. So That's I a... was using everything I had to get back Brett Hull cards, yeah. and uh, so yeah, there was a time, I used to come to the TriStar shows here in Dallas, I loved the TriStar sports card shows, but they've kind of phased out. That's the only bad thing about eBay and the open markets like that, it's killed the mom and pop shops. That's true, and Rick and it's Warner, A yeah. lot of the uh, the sports card shows down in the Dallas area are gone now as well, mm -hmm. so that's it's a challenge. It's starting to build back up though. I'm well, happy That's awesome to report. because I will gladly go to those shows and I will take my son that's 13 that loves basketball, he's an NBA guy big time, and, uh, and get him into that because I think kids need to enjoy opening a pack, pulling a really cool card, yeah. And as long as the companies that are producing the cards can continue to make affordable packs so mm -hmm. that all the kids can enjoy it, that's where, as a kid, that thrill of the chase was the biggest thing for me. So when you were a kid, um, how did you how did you acquire your cards? Did you go to like a card shop? Did oh, you go to a grocery yeah. store? I had a local card shop mainly because I didn't understand retail to hobby packs sure, back then. Sure, sure. And even um, back then they were the same. Yeah. So there, there wasn't. There a, was it, very minimal. The right. options were so more limited now then. Now it's, it's a little weird. Uh, honestly, yeah. when I started collecting in 1991, there was Donruss Tops. Upper Deck had just come out in yep. 89. Yeah, you're right. Um, and I feel like I'm forgetting one, but I think that was honestly it. Score was out there. Oh, too, Score was yeah. in. Yes, Score. Because I bought a bunch of 90 score football. Barry Sanders, Aikman. I was huge into football. I'm an yeah. Oklahoma Sooner fan, so <laughs> Barry Sanders was Got right up the good street. Running backs coming out. Yeah, but uh, no, so I bought all my cards in a hobby shop, and I remember thinking $2.50 was a lot for a pack when I was a kid. It was. <laughs> I had $10 or $12 in a couple of weeks. That's all I could. So I'd go in and buy every bit I could out of packs. You were an allowance guy. Yeah, okay. I was an allowance guy, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I went in there and spent everything I had every week and I had a, a long vault box and started there. Now I can honestly say in my home in Oklahoma, I've got 35, 3,000 count floor boxes. Oof, wow. Old, you know, a lot of older, all yeah. sports, because I used to be all sports. Right. And, and then I focused on whole. Uh, but my whole collection, probably, I I can't even tell you how many cards are in that. Uh, shoot, seven, eight, ten thousand, probably. Well, I I'm super excited that you brought some of your cards here today, yeah. and I would love to take a look at them if you want to go. That's over there awesome because I'd All love right. to show them off to somebody. Let's go see it. <laughs> All 
Oh my gosh, Jason. <laughs> this is wild, man. So th these are all like high-end singles. Yeah, most of them are. And, uh, you know, well, some of them are older parallels. Uh, a lot of this was is over the years acquired. Now, a lot of the newer stuff, absolutely high-end, you know, from the leaf pearl to uh, graded cards to... I've got an obsession now, not only getting like one of the three, like if there's three available, I'm trying to get yeah. all three of the three yeah. now. I've gone to another yeah. level of insanity, yeah, so yeah. it's not usually possible, but there's a couple things that I've overdone it, obviously. Well, well yeah. that's what collectors do. Well, yeah, you know? I know, yeah. So. so we came over here and, and I immediately just caught my eye. There's a, a bread hole one of one. Yeah, uh, leaf one of the pearl new here. leaf pearl, the gold one of one pearl, uh, which I was fortunate enough to buy from an individual that had it. And he gave it to me at a reasonable price. And anytime I get one at a reasonable price, I'm going to purchase the card. Yeah. If he's fair, I know that these are expensive packs. I know he had to pay up to get it. So, uh, you know, not only did I stop there, I bid on the black one of one that I lost out on. But then, you know, I went ahead and got the the one number. Oh eight, my gosh. And then I couldn't stop there. So then I went ahead and <laughs> went to the one of Whoa, one. Whoa, a quad eight, auto. Eight, oh wow, eight. Eight autographs. An one octo of one. auto. Uh, Joe Sackick, Brett Hull, Dale Howarchuk, Larry Murphy, Chris Chelios, Pavel Bure, Nicholas Lidstrom, and Peter Forsberg. Eight guys that are in the Hall of Fame. Oh my gosh. And I did pay up a lot for this card. I think I paid around $200 for it. Well, but so what is that numbered out of? One. It's That's one, one, one. Okay, I was going to say there can't blues. be many of so them. <laughs> they have different versions, but I just had the opportunity to buy this card, and I did. They so. all have great autographs, yeah. too. Yeah, and they're, they're just super solid. The Pearl product is awesome. I don't want to spend all our time on that, uh, but I was trying to find a particular card. There's the one number to four. I'm looking for the autographs I have with, with uh, Sackick. Oh, yeah. Man, these are wild. Yeah. So... He and Joe Sackick have a dual patch autograph. This is number two of three. And, then, and cool patches, too. And the week they came out on eBay, I purchased this card. The next night, I won three of three. <laughs> so I'm looking for one of three if anybody's got it, because I just want to finish the set. Uh, and then I've got the three of four, which I'm trying not to be repetitive, but I'm looking for the particular one. I it's, so I don't know if you find yourself doing this. I find myself, I will latch on to a particular card. Like I, I love Luka Doncic. And he's, yeah. you know, oh, the dude's a phenomenal Dallas, basketball player too. A, a, a local guy. I just, I love following his career so far. Yeah. And I find myself, I'll latch on to his cards. He has a card called the uh, Kaboom. It was an insert and a set that Panini put out. And I'll, like, I want to buy all of them. Yeah. There's maybe 50 out there, but if I could track down all 50 for a reasonable price, I would easily buy them. Of yeah. course, and my it, wife Because there are that. certain, like refractors with me. Refractors are an old technology, but I love them. Mirrors, any kind of mirror, I'll buy yeah. that. Yeah. Um, okay, the last couple of pearls I'll show you. The one of one autograph, Sackick and Hull, navy oh, blue, man. dual patch. So I'm sorry. Did you? What is the, what is the uh, link between Sackick and, and Brett Hull? I don't know. Other than in the era of the um, late '90s and early 2000s, obviously the the Avalanche were winning a bunch of cups. Right. Sackick was a great player. Yeah. Hull was too. I guess I'm just figuring it, they were relatively. They're both superstars duo, in the league. Yeah. yeah. And they were great players. And then I acquired the gold one of one as well. Oh my gosh, so, that is so cool. Yeah. And you know, again, I get a little too crazy about. Too many copies of everything. I, I realize it. <laughs> Crazy I is relative, you know. Yeah. It's so, but all in all, this this collection um, started again as a kid. So a lot of this stuff is not super high valued. I'm just gonna lay some of this down. So yeah, you yeah. Can see, yeah. you've just got real unique, rare cards like uh, the SPX Force, uh, oh, and yeah. the the um, sleeve is really scratched up. So I apologize. But Upper Deck made this phenomenal card back in the late '90s, and it's super hard to find, and it's just one of those things I just kept. And Upper Deck makes a beautiful card. Yeah. They, they really, they've got some of the best looking designs. Um, you know, it's... So what, what are some of your earlier cards that you picked up that, well, from, from that original collection? This album okay. uh, is anything from the start of his career, 88 to 98, through 97, 98. This is all of the, of the parallel versions. Uh, this was before jersey cards, obviously, 98, 99 was the right. first year they had a, a right. jersey piece in the card. Uh, so these are not necessarily high value, but hard to find. All the different parallels, things there. That's the early, early stuff. Then you have, this is all a mixed match of everything I've acquired since, from old cards that I've lost and replaced to, you know, we've got, I'm, where to start? Okay, let's just, uh, one of the brand new cards, uh, Joe Montana, 
the the multi sport Joe Montana Brett Hull. Whoa, <laughs> that's dual cool. patch one of five. <laughs> that's, that's so random and awesome. And then later the next week I bought three of five because it was more colorful. I wanted I want the yeah. most unique version of Hull of on course, everything I own. Of course, of course. I love that you get a piece of the star yeah. in that one though. And that's, and that's, and that's real the cool. key for me is finding something that is truly unique. Uh, let me find you some of the really unique patches. Oh my gosh. Like the St. Louis blue logo. That is a wildly cool patch. This card is number to 15. And another thing that is weird about me, my lucky number is 13. Okay. So anything number 13 of Brett Hull, I try to acquire. Even is if he it number 13? Me, no, no, he, no, he wore okay. 16, he wore okay. 17, he wore 22, but 13 is my lucky number, so number. I don't know what the, the fix is there. I like it. Um, there are some real unique Dallas Stars patches in here. So if, if you had to keep Let's say, God forbid, something horrible happened and you could yep. only keep five of your Brett Hole cards. Oh boy. Can you, you my, can you like <sighs> distill this down to five cards that you would hang I on don't, to? That would be extremely <laughs> tough. I'll tell you one of the ones I would keep though. This is one oh, of my all time look at favorite. That. A great uh, swatch size and a Detroit cut oh, that's man. just. It's a giant window, which I love yeah. because you get to see a ton of the patch. Yeah. And you get a, a majority of the center wheel of the jersey. Uh, that yeah. is beautiful. Super unique. Um, Back to Upper Deck's designs, man, and their, and their and patch. Upper Deck Ice, I mean, you get a lot of these that are just uh, a, a white number sliver, you know, real right. plain. This is the most unique one I've ever seen. There's 49 of these out here. There's only generally two or three on eBay at a time, and none of them are as, as flashy as this one. This was a huge one. Here is a perfect example. Here's another version of that card. This is what most of them look like. Uh, so to be able to compare Yeah, oh yeah, you can the see two, the difference in the patches on these. The uniqueness, that is that's, I mean, they're all gorgeous. Uh, another Dallas Stars patch uh, off I the just sleeve. Love, the star yeah. design yeah. is just really cool. They have great, great logos. You get out to see any Stars games? Oh yeah, uh, we've, uh, the Stars, we do some stuff with them every once in a while. Last year we, we did a couple of promotions with them at our shop, so they've been very generous in very letting cool. us come to games, and so I've gotten to pick up a couple there. Um, this is a real unique card, number to five a dual jersey oh, card, man. but you just don't find them. It's a black diamond version. Upper deck stuff is extremely hard to find in low uh, print runs. So again, I feel bad that some of these are in thin sleeves, but I'm getting ready to get the majority of these graded. Uh, how about this one? Artifacts, oh, dual wow. patch number to three. You see that autograph. one? That is a, man, those are cool patches. Yeah, just when you can get any kind of unique cut like that, especially off the blue stuff, because a lot of his stuff is Detroit or Dallas. So it kind of bums me out sometimes when they have uh, patch cards and they don't use like a recognizable piece of the jersey. Yeah. It just looks like any any it, white jersey. What's worse is when you get a one of one. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, what did you, you not could, do? You so could, these, like, I really appreciate the patch selection you have, because to me, if you're gonna, if you're gonna fork out some money for a patch card, get something recognizable. Yeah, and that's that's the thing with me, and I'm digging here, I apologize. They've got them no, organized, but finding them. See, here are two versions of Brett Hull in in the game used. One from Detroit and oh, one, yeah. one from the Stars, numbered to five. But they're very good cuts, and they're really unique patches. So. Man, I can't believe you haven't met Brett Hull. Oh, I. it's just, you know, honestly, I didn't get on this show until six years ago, but I was, I mean, you don't meet celebrities like that just walking through the street. You've true. got to know That's people. A good point. And a good that, point. for me, I just was never in front of the ability to do that. Um, let me dig here. Some of these are, there's some real unique numbered cards in here. Yeah. Uh, but they're just, you know, here's a one on one Roenick Hull oh, dual man. patch. This is a great out of in the game used. I tell you what, Jason. Yeah. I've got a surprise for you. Okay. So let, let's get away from this for a little bit okay. and. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Okay. Follow me. Gotcha. Man, that is ridiculous. Well, I, I'm, I might have a problem. You, <laughs> I think, that's uh, a great problem and, to and have. You know what the biggest problem is? Now, uh, everybody in my family knows how much I spend on these cards. Uh oh, yeah. uh oh, yeah. yeah, yeah so that's, that's the problem. <laughs> that's, yeah, once you, once you uh, the people who aren't collectors see the price tag on this, yeah. they, they don't quite understand. But, okay, so as you know, this show is all about opening packs. So okay. I picked up some packs that I thought we might have fun opening, but since I'm I'm not super knowledgeable about hockey, as I okay. told you, yeah, yeah. I need you to help me out with these. But okay. these are 88, 89, oh. Opeachy. This is the year Brett of the Brett Hull rookie, rookie card. Yeah. So I, I'm gonna go hey, and if, I think if we, we have- If we pull one out of this, I, that would be phenomenal. Uh, well, let's do it. Let's so do it. it's, 
I don't think it's a very big set. The OPG were usually a little bit smaller. Yeah, I want to say, if I'm just guessing, like 147 cards. -ish. I think that's right. Yeah, so they were we've similar. got, uh, I don't know how many cards. We've got probably 10 packs, probably. Five or six cards, maybe yeah. seven. Yeah, I don't yeah. So, a long time. I mean, I'll, I'll do the math, but I want to say we have about 50% chance yeah. of pulling if my, if my. Hey, but what's worse is that there's a 30 year old piece of gum right there. You know on top what? I'm going to let you <laughs> eat the gum. Sometimes we eat the gum, sometimes we don't. That's totally up to you. Yeah. But regardless, I, I wish you luck, sir. I hope you pull one, but let's go ahead and open, open right, them at the see same what we time. Got here. Oh boy, this gum is. Yeah, that one's Dale Hunter is yeah, going to keep that one, I think. Toast in that first card. God, see, but I just love, a lot of people don't understand just the classic oh, man. card. How it's, cool these it are is. beautiful. Yeah. And these, these are so crisp. Yeah. They are just, it's so fun to see cards that are 30 some years old brand new well, and out of the pack. The corners are so square. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got the offset or offset centered cuts on some of them. Well too. what I love about some of the 80s Okichi is you mm. get this bright orange back on yep. it instead of that kind of dull orange that you yep. get on the regular tops. And typically the Opeachy there's a little less print run on those. So yeah. and I know in hockey Opeachy is where it's they've at, always right? yeah they've always held more value, especially on the rookie card stuff. I tell you I, I Hunted and hunted for uh, a Gretzky rookie back in the day. Oh yeah, uh, the uh, 7980. Were you hunting no peachy or tops? Not that it oh, matters. Oh, peachy. Yeah, awesome. but it was in the it was the highest card by far in that group. Mike, how do you pronounce Mike's last name? I know he's a big. Lewitt? I don't. That one I honestly don't know. That's early in my collecting career. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've man, I've done a couple episodes with yeah. hockey cards. Yeah. I butcher so many names. All I get in the comments is it's pronounced this, it's pronounced uh, that. I'm like, give it's like me hey, a we're breath, trying. Man. You know, down these, in the south, these are tough a lot of the names. Yeah, and I used to watch a lot of hockey, <laughs> so I would pick it up that way as well. well. So far, I mean, I've got a lot of names I'm very familiar with. Yeah, but, well, uh, we'll show, show not like the one. The, well, I mean, you any, know, any card you want Adam to show Oates is this, one of those. Oh, one. sorry. There you go. Adam Oates is one of those guys that uh, played a long time with Hola in St. Louis, so they have a lot oh, of really? joint. They have a lot of cards together now. Nice. The newer stuff, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, but Housley, Phil Housley, and uh, Matt Naslin, obviously. Now their kids are playing hockey, if that tells you how old I am. No kidding. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So, I'm feeling right. It's going to be in here. It's just I think so, too, up. man. Yeah. I hope you pull it, though. I hope I don't pull it. Well, I hope someone pulls it, but... Yeah. I just hope I'll... it doesn't come with the gum. I yeah, know. No, it's going to break my one. heart yeah. if that happens, man. I know he's in here somewhere. There's a Mezier. I mean, nice. Mezier, everybody yeah. knows Hall of yeah, Famer of Mezier. Yeah. Yeah, great player uh, with Gretzky in that, Edmonton, man. and then obviously with the, the New York Rangers winning the Cup in 94. That was back when I was really into hockey. All right, we're halfway through. Here we go. We can okay. do this. We got this. We can do this. Oh, man. Grant Fuhr. Grant Fuhr. Another... Oh, and it's toast. It's the gun yeah. card. <laughs> Grant Fuhr is done. Speaking of that Edmonton <laughs> team that won all the championships, oh, there's that's the goal. Yeah, there. yeah. Oh, and let's see. I've got some flipped the other way. Maybe this uh -oh. is a special pack. Yeah, that's maybe a good sign. Claude Lemieux, Robitaille, another ah. Hall of Famer, Luke you know Robitaille. What? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that one to you too. I just, I want you to pull it. I don't want. I think it's in there somewhere. I, I think it is. I think it's gonna probably be the last pack. You know how good it feels to pull the old wax. It's been a long time. It is fun, time. man. Back and you when said it was you don't wax. open packs very often. No, not You're anymore. A single guy. Uh, anymore now, it just financially doesn't make sense for me yeah. if I can, uh, you know, acquire the whole. I'm just gonna go find it. Uh, for sure. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we right got there. it. That's Let me see awesome. that bad boy. Hey, that's nicely centered yeah, too. Yeah, dude, that is oh, a man. huge get hey, right there. Hey, I've got, hold on. I've, oh, that's awesome. We got to put that in. We got Yeah, we got to put him away. Let me How special put is that, that bad boy. Yeah, yeah. we you did it. Can't ask for better than that. Nice work, man. Yeah. See, I, I wanted to make sure you pulled it. That worked out perfect. Yep. Wow. Oh, Jason, that that's awesome, awesome, man. That's a beauty too. Him and Shanahan, same pack. Boy, I tell you what, like the, the Opeachy cards are, they're tough condition wise too, just cause I feel like their, um, their cutting facility or their cutting standards weren't on the same level as tops. Yeah. So man, this is. This is Dude, that is a huge get. <laughs> 30 year old wax to pull the guy. I know, that we I know, I know. I, mean, I know it's it's not as exciting, but go ahead and open that last dude, pack but just it, to see what it is. Though. I knows? mean, that, that right there made it all worth it. Heck so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Lee, that's awesome. That was perfect. Yeah, you couldn't have done any better. <laughs> so, I'm just so glad it didn't have the gum attached to oh, it. Oh man, me too. Or so, just dinged up or horribly off-centered or any anything. You know really. what? It doesn't even matter. It doesn't just matter. A it bunch doesn't of guys, matter. But 
This card right here made it all worth it. Dude, nice work. Nice. So uh, that's a gift from the show. Well, thank you. you. I appreciate that very uh, much. So is there is there anything we can plug for you? Is there any social media you want to turn on? Well, I mean, uh, you know, uh, Jason Aker at GasMonkeyGarage.com. Okay. If you have any rare Brett Hole cards, uh, old or new, I'm very interested. I'm always looking for something. I look on eBay, but a lot of times people don't realize that there are still people looking for a guy that's retired and right. a Hall of Famer. Uh, so the the more rare, the more unique, the better for me. Um, and so, also, what is that handle again? Jason Aker, A K E R, no period at GasMonkeyGarage.com or Instagram GMG Jason. Uh, you can contact me that way as well. Uh, this is a huge honor for me, man. Hey, I love packs, brother, so love nice hard to meet you. car collecting, and now the whole world knows how big a geek I am. Too. <laughs> you fit right in, man. Uh, hey, it's perfect. Thank you for joining us, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Right, thank you. Hey guys, thanks for checking out another episode. Make sure to subscribe to Pack Geek on YouTube. Also check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks. Pack Geek.